how much did you have to really teach your people or the pastors that joined you in this fast across Egypt? How did they train or teach their people about fasting and prayer? Fasting in Egypt um, very much understood or accepted because of the Orthodox and the Catholic Church. It's part of their tradition. And they fast nearly one third of the year, every year. Hmm. So at least. Uh, Muslims, they fast every year uh, the, through the, the, the... Right now. Right now in Ramadan. So it's not uh, a thing or a word that's unheard of. It's there all the time. You see it. We as evangelists, we don't fast like the, the, the American church that much, like mm -hmm. the Orthodox and the, the Muslims. Uh, but we had to teach people that we fast to pray. Mm. Fasting is um, a channel, a preparation that we can effectively intercede for the nation. It's not a thing by itself. It's not a thing to do for myself or for, to please God. No, no. It's... Um, it's preparing myself to focus on the spirituality, on the kingdom of God, instead of my needs. Uh, it's a time to sacrifice what I need uh, to seek the kingdom and the, the glory uh, of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this is why we ask to fast to pray, <laughs> okay. not to fast alone, which is a little bit different than the other denominations, that they, they, they fast to fast in itself is a value. A spiritual ritual. Exactly. But we focused on, no, 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 no. Let's fast, let's um, uh, stop eating, sacrifice some of the meals, or uh, complete fast. Some of the people, they, they keep on days without eating at all, only drinking water or something like that, uh, for days or even the 40 days without food at all. Uh, somebody uh, may fast the whole day and eat during the night or something like that. Uh, we, 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 we tell people, do whatever you can. But the thing is, fast to pray. Give more time. The, the time that you give for food, the energy that you give to buy and to cook and to eat, give this time uh, to be in the presence of God, to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, and, pray. and to seek the face of God and to seek the kingdom and intercede for the nation and uh, um, uh, make a change in the, in, in, the, in the spiritual realm. And it worked. It worked that uh, uh, people got the message. We, we don't fast for fasting, we fast to pray, to come together to pray. Um, maybe this is why we had that number of people coming to, to pray, because they are fasting to pray. So now I, I have to go and pray because I'm not fasting just to, 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 as a ritual thing. No, no, I'm doing this for the, for the purpose of being together in, in, in God's presence uh, to seek the kingdom praying more effectively because when you're hungry physically, you're more hungry spiritually. And as we have read about the revivalists that um, we know of through the, the centuries, they normally talked about the lack of hunger of God and how revival only takes place when we're hungry spiritually. Exactly. So if we can discipline ourselves to be hungry physically, and uh, it seems that would affect yeah. the way we pray. What would you say to the pastors in America who would do this except they feel that they aren't sure if the people would follow? And um, perhaps they uh, really don't even know where to begin to uh, inspire their people. To uh, what would you say to the pastors in America? Even maybe some that don't want to do it, that it's just too hard. Of course, fasting and praying is the most difficult thing to do. Uh, much more difficult than to preach or to serve or to do conference or retreat or any other activity. Because any other thing can be just an activity, but fasting and praying is not an activity. Is uh, a real uh, spiritual offering is a sacrifice. Uh, 
is a, a real entrance into the very presence of God in humility. So don't be discouraged if few people will follow you in the beginning. But you have to lead it by yourself. The senior pastor should be start should start by himself. Should be the leader of the, the of the prayer meetings. Nobody else. He should be the example. People should see him crying in tears for the sake of his nation and his city. Then people will come in tens and hundreds and in thousands. Um, in our prayer meeting here, uh, we started with few hundreds start in the beginning. And we felt we will not continue. It's not easy. The people just to come to intercede for the nation, not even for themselves. People uh, uh, w would, would pray for themselves more than anything. They have more problems, more needs in their lives than the history of their nations. Uh, why to sacrifice my time to pray for uh, my fellow citizens, Muslims and Christians? I, I prefer to pray for, pray for myself. We thought people would not come. But to our astonishment, to our surprise, the, 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 the number of prayer warriors started to increase and increase and increase and increase. People started to come from outside the city every Monday to pray for the nations. People started to see visions and dreams about the revival. Uh, God uh, began to, to speak to their hearts that I'm going to visit. Go and pray, go and pray, go and stand in the gap. So I would encourage you, if you keep on, people will keep on coming and they will bring their friends and they will bring the whole church and people will, will, will see with their eyes the, the outcome. They will see and they will believe that the prayer can change the history. How are you keeping that spirit of prayer alive? We speak, we practice, we create different models. Uh, for some people they can they cannot come Monday to pray, but we have the House of Prayer. They can come any time. Uh, we have. Uh, Tell us about the House of Prayer. We have a dedicated hall here uh, that uh, every two hours there is a group of people, maybe one, two, three, ten, twenty, one hundred, it depends. They come to take the shift, to stand in the gap. And then after two hours, another group would come. Uh, to fill the gap. So we divided the 24 hours uh, per seven, seven days, for people to lead the worship and the intercession. And people will sign in, I will come this time, I will cover this, uh, this, uh, this time. And the first year, we covered 70 percent. The second year, we covered 80 percent. We are about maybe 90 percent of the total time. We have people in this uh, hall uh, praying and interceding and praising and worshiping uh, God. And that's day and night? Day and night. Day and night, 24 hours. And it's in a house? In, a, in one of the, of the halls here, one of the, of the rooms, big room here. Oh, okay. A hall dedicated for a prayer. Uh, only Friday is the day off because we have maybe six, seven meetings. So we are, as a church, covering most of the day by, by praying. Uh, so, creating different models. We have a, a special day for the youth to come to pray for the nation, which is a different style than the older people. So we have the youth prayer meeting, we have the adult youth meeting, uh, prayer meeting, uh, we have a committee that they pray every week to keep the fire, mm -hmm. to pray for the spirit of prayer. Mm. They intercede for the church. The church can be able to pray. We believe that without praying for the spirit of prayer, you will not find it. Mm. I have to pray for you that you can pray, and you will pray for me that I can. It's, it's not easy. You have to admit that it's not easy to pray. It's the most no. difficult thing to do. We need a special grace. So we have uh, to dedicate people to pray for the church to be able to pray. Hmm. Of course, seeing results, seeing things happening out of that will encourage people to pray. Uh, so we tell stories that last week we prayed for one, two, three. Here, read the news. Here, you can see. This will encourage people. This will, will, will make people um, 
uh, eager to come. You are writing history. You are doing the most valuable thing for the, for the nation. You are doing the most valuable thing for the kingdom. So you have to convince them that this is the best thing to offer. How can Christians in the United States, how can we as Americans pray for the Egyptian believers and how can we pray for the entire nation of Egypt right now? As I shared, we are in the middle, in the middle. We are halfway. We believe God is in control, but we believe that Satan and the evil power are there and they have an agenda and they have a plan. And it's, it's the time for this nation. We believe this is the time for the nation mm -hmm. to be delivered out of darkness. Uh, to go into the real freedom, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of thinking. We don't had the chance to free, to be free to think. Can you imagine? We have been taught, don't think, don't argue, don't ask. So we are in the middle of the process uh, to free people from their bondage and to, uh, to break um, the prison that we lived in for years and years and years. It's a time for the reconciliation. It's the time for a new day and a new history. And we believe that whatever we will ask in unity from the Father in the name of the Son will be given to us. Will be given to whatever we ask uh, from the Father in the name on behalf of Christ for this nation will happen. This is the time. So don't pray for us. Pray with us. With us. Join hands with us. Uh, pray for the fulfillment of God's plan. And whatever happened here will happen all over the area. All over the area. The percussion wave will cover the whole Middle East. I can only imagine that there are people in America that would say, how can I pray for my nation when a lot of people have different problems of their own? We have more personal needs here than anywhere else. Uh, uh, statistically, 40% under the line of poverty in Egypt. And uh, somebody said, no, no, it's 70%, it's not 40%. The unemployment, the divorce rate, uh, um, very high rates in Egypt right now. So we have a lot of personal issues. But the promise is, if you pray for the kingdom, that thy name be hallowed, be sanctified, be revealed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If we pray for the kingdom, for the advancement of the kingdom, for God's glory, then we can pray for our sins to be forgiven, our bread to be given, our life to be victorious. So we should pray first for the kingdom <laughs> and then for our needs. The bread and the forgiveness and the victory. If This is the Lord's prayer. Thy name be hallowed. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. This is more important. When we pray for him, for his sake, then our needs will be fulfilled automatically, will be given as a bonus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God, and the, your needs will be given as a bonus, will be added. You don't need, you, you don't need even to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Your father knows well that you need it. Uh, the father knows well, he will do it for me. And this is my experience. We pray for the nation more than we pray for that church. Uh, I pray for my nation much, much, much more than what I pray for my kids and for myself. And I'm seeing him taking care of me and my kids miraculously, miraculously, miraculously. This is the least to say, miraculously. And this is the covenant that I made with God. I will take care of your kingdom. You will take care of my home. <laughs> I'm taking your affair, and you are taking my affair. And um, I'm, I'm the winning side, because nobody can take care of my uh, uh, needs like him. He's faithful. Exactly. 
He loves us. We're his children. More than, more than we love ourselves. Now, what would you say is the difference between praying for the kingdom of God in your nation and praying for your nation, or is it it's the same. the same? It's the same. Because nothing will happen good in your nation unless the kingdom of God will be revealed in your nation. It's, it's, it's the kingdom of light, the truth, the love, and... Um, the foundation exactly for everything exactly. else nothing good can come except from God's hands so thy will be done is the best for your nation thy kingdom God in your nation is the best for your nation for the saved and unsaved people for everybody for the believers and the unbelievers the kingdom is the best for everybody well, you are such an inspiration, and I just am wondering, would you consider coming to America to share this message yourself right live on air? I mean, we're, we're going to share this video, but we would love to have you come to America and uh, be an encouragement as we approach the days to come. With, with pleasure. And uh, we have a debt to pay back <laughs> oh. to the American church. And we want to serve you, and we need to serve one another. This is the time to join hands for the kingdom, more than ever. Well, and we, we appreciate more than you can imagine the example that you all have been here in Egypt and, and your church, Qasr El Dobara, and you know, all the people that have shown such dedication and hunger for God to see such things taking place. We, uh, we honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.